Barbara Muller from Switzerland has grown up with pedigree dogs, getting her own Cocker Spaniel in 1970, Old English Sheepdogs in the, in the 1980s, and later in the 1990s PBGVs, having bred many champions, international champions, and world and European winners with her homebred dogs. She started judging in 1980 and became an FCI all-rounder judge in 2011. A member of the Swiss Kennel Club, Club Board, she, pre she was previously president of the FCI Show and Judges Commission, as well as being vice president of the FCI European section for many years. Barbara was elected onto the FCI General Committee in 2019 and serves on the executive board as treasurer. Thank, thank you very much. Unfortunately, my part today is not with emotions. It's, there are no emotions in regulations, and I cannot put them in. But anyway, we need uh, regulations, and that's why I'm here today. When I was asked to present the FCI Dog Health and Welfare International Regulations to you today, I thought it would be a fairly easy task. Unfortunately, that was not what I expected. Uh, I, had, I thought I uh, search in the internet, I go on the FCI website, and then I get uh, everything in one pamphlet and I present it today to you. That was a dream. No. It was not as easy as I thought. And uh, finally, I found in different regulations, I found lots of, uh, uh, in various regulations, uh, and I, I compiled the most important for you. In regulations for FCI dog shows, Article 4, special requirements, it is said that the dog's welfare and health must be of utmost priority at all dog shows. The organizers are requested to add the following message in the show catalog, giving it sufficient visibility. The exhibitor are responsible for the welfare of dogs at FCI international dog shows. That means that the organizer is not responsible. But do you think that is a good way? This is what we like to see as rep responsible breeders and exhibitors. And that is what we sometimes see. We have cages. Here you can see with two dogs or three dogs in, and they cannot sit, they cannot stay, they, they have really problems. And uh, in my opinion, of course it is, uh, uh, it is the exhibitor who is in charge, but we as organizers should not accept it. And uh, that's why I think the exhibitors are in charge, but also the organizers we cannot leave the, anything like that for two hours or three hours. I made this photo by myself, and I watched at the, the time, the, these dogs were more than two hours in that box, and the people probably had a good coffee. And that is not what uh, we call welfare. The next one is, it is forbidden to expose a dog to a situation that can be dangerous for its health and welfare, such as, for example, leaving them in a car in excess in very hot or cold weather. We all know how hot it can be in a few minutes in a car. And when we think that, at least in Europe, nearly every year I can uh, read in the newspaper that the baby was forgotten in the car. And I mean, how can it happen that uh, 
uh, someone comes to, uh, maybe not an ex exhibitor, but a visitor comes to the dog show and uh, he thinks, oh, I have a quick uh, look around and I leave my dog in the car because I don't want it to meet other dogs. Maybe he doesn't like it. And then he meets a friend and they go and they talk and they talk and the dog is still in the car. And uh, it is getting, when you see how hot it is, you can see it here, how quick and how hot the car is. So in my opinion as well, it is not only the exhibitor who is in charge, also the uh, organizer. And uh, in Europe, we have uh, it, uh, this problem under, a bit under control now because we have uh, volunteers who are checking the whole day the parking place. It is not a really nice work, but it helps. And of course, that is uh, absolutely a no-go to uh, uh, treat the dog in a bad manner. Violation of this ruling will result in exclusion from the ongoing and future dog shows. That means that the exhibitor can be banned from dog shows if it is necessary. It normally doesn't happen, at least we do it. Uh, we give, uh, like in football, we give uh, a yellow card and when the people get, the same people get a red card, they get, uh, uh, they are not allowed to come for maybe one year, maybe two years, it depends on the problem, that we ban them from all our dog shows. In international guidelines about uh, doping, I found the following. Participating dogs must not be injured or ill. Furthermore, they must be not affected in any forbidden way. For example, they must not have received treatments that may illegally affect their appearance in a way that is not allowed, performance or reactions or the way in which injuries or illnesses manifest themselves. And that's what I mean when you read this text, uh, it is very theoretically. Dogs, to dogs whose coat, noses or skin have been treated with a substance that change their color or, or structure are prohibited from participating in dogs, uh, in shows, sorry. No powder, no spray, no, uh, no liquid means no problems. All dogs must be available for examination and test that may be necessary in order to check for doping or other forbidden measures. The organizer is entitled to copy veterinarian certificates. Of course, when uh, uh, an exhibitor comes to a dog show and has a certificate for, for a special treatment, we have to accept it, but they have to have the, uh, uh, the certificate. Forbidden methods. The actual effect of the use of a forbidden method is not relevant. So whatever they have given, it doesn't matter if it helped or if it didn't help, it doesn't matter. This is the rule. In trials, shows and competitions, the following are also prohibited. Measures to relieve pain. Everybody knows Metacam is very well used, but actually it is forbidden to give that if you want to go to a show with your dog or to, uh, to other activities. Measures that affect the dog's uh, general condition. Uh, disease processes should not be affected. 
in the case of shows measures that alter a natural coat or structure of the skin, nose, or coat are also prohibited. I mean, this is exaggerated photo, a picture, and we don't see that at shows, but it is just a funny picture. And it, uh, it does not mean that uh, some dogs are not colored when they come to shows. I have never seen a pug like that, but actually somebody did it because I found the photo. <laughs> but also this very nice poodle, it's a beautiful poodle. This coat is not naturally groomed, it's not possible. So there's, there's something in the coat. I don't blame the person for that because that's the way we look for nice poodles. But of, officially it is not allowed. Most important for all of us, I found in... Uh, now I'm somewhere else. I found in international breeding rules uh, of the FCI, the international breeding regulations of Federation of the FCI are binding on all members and contract partners. These regulations appeal directly to all members and contract partners. This means that for the purpose of breeding puppies recognized by the FCI, breeding may only be carried out with pedigree dogs, which have a sound temperament, are healthy and functional and hereditary terms, and are registered with a stud book or registered in an appendix, recognized as well by the FCI. In addition, they have to fulfill the requirements specified by the relevant FCI members or contract partners. And this last sentence is important for kennel clubs because that means our regulation, FCI regulation, are the, the minimum and uh, are the, the, the basic. And uh, if a kennel club wants to uh, get stronger regla reglements, it is not forbidden. Uh, if it's necessary, you have to do that in your kennel club. You have to strengthen the regulation when you think it is really necessary. The only dogs which are considered to be healthy in hereditary terms are those transferring breed standard futures, breed type and temperament typical of that breed without, without displaying any substantial hereditary defects which could impair the functional health of its descendants. The members and contract partners of the I F of the FCI are required in this regard to prevent any exaggeration of breed feed features in the standard which could result in impairment of dogs' functional health. We were talking since yesterday about fit for function in many ways and we have it in our regulations. Dogs with eliminating faults, for example, unsound temperament. I mean, even a shivava can be a, uh, can be can bite you. <laughs> Deafness or blindness. Thanks God, we don't see that very often at dog shows. hair lip or cleft palate, substantial dental def defects or jaw anomalies, this poor dog cannot even bite a flea. 
and then the, the, the other kind of illness, PAA, epilepsy, cryptochism, albinism, improper coat colors, or diagnosis, severe hip dysplasy. With all these dogs, should, from all these dogs, should not be bred from. In the Finnish Kennel Club regulations, uh, as I was searching in, in different uh, kennel clubs, uh, the Finnish regulations, uh, I thought they are very interesting. Dog show particip particip participation is not open to dogs which are not vaccinated in accordance with the Finnish Kennel Club's vaccination regulations. And I must say, in this I found in nearly every single website of the Kennel Clubs. Uh, dogs who want to go and participate in whatever, in uh, agility or at dog shows or at racing courses, uh, they have to be uh, vaccinated. In most countries, they have to be vaccinated. Uh, distemper, hepatitis, leptospirose, kennel cord, and uh, when they come from other countries, of course, with uh, uh, rabies uh, vaccination. So this is not the most important. Sick dogs are not allowed. We always say, yes, a sick dog should not come to the dog show. But sometimes when you go around, you see a limping dog, or you see a dog with a very special diarrhea you think uh, cannot be from one day and people are still coming. So in Finnish regulation, it is, oh yes, we have seen it. We have seen it. In, in Finnish regulations, it is uh, written. And this is why I especially wrote, uh, put that in the, uh, in the presentation. Bitches in whelp 30 days or less before they get their puppies. That means we, they count for the 63 days, nine weeks. 30 days before uh, they, they should get their puppies, they are not allowed to be shown. And witches that have whelped nearly 11 weeks before. They are also not allowed to be shown. And uh, we had that proposal at the Show and Judges Commission meeting, I think four years ago, uh, that it would be implemented in all show regulations from the FCI, but it did not go through. Uh, not because uh, uh, the uh, uh, it was not a good idea, but uh, the, Swiss, uh, the Finnish Kennel Club has a super, super software. They can check everything, and everything is open. You can see when the dog was mated, you can see if the dog has uh, HD or whatever. Uh, all the results are open to everybody, and the system is so good that they, uh, the system will check it by itself. In my kennel club, we have no, no possibility to check if someone shows a dog and then uh, maybe five weeks or four weeks later, the, uh, the bitch will get puppies. Maybe it's only one puppy and then you don't see it or you don't feel it. So this is why we didn't get that uh, uh, to the show and judges regulations. Then further on in the Finnish regulation, dogs that have been cropped and dog or dogged contrary to Finnish law, that is normal in uh, Europe. Dogs uh, which are dogged or cropped are nearly not allowed to be shown in any countries anymore. Then of course, aggressive dogs. And then dogs which have been subject to measures aimed at altering uh, a fault mentioned in the breed standard or some other char characteristics that is considered to be a fault. A 
And then, very important, dogs whose coat has been dyed or which have been groomed in a manner that is contrary to the breed standard uh, with the purpose of concealing, for example, a long coat or a dog's actual coat quality. Man, oh man. A dog whose performance has been affected in a way that is in breach of the Finnish Kennel Club's anti-doping regulations. I know I, I know I press the right button. In agility regulations of the FCI, I found that uh, uh, the uh, competition uh, is open to all healthy and physically fit dogs. In rules and guidelines for obedience trials, health dogs that are blind suffer from uh, contagious disease or infections or have hookworms, scabies, or any other vermin, as well as dogs that are aggressive may not participate in obedience trials. Dogs that are taped, stitched, or bandaged are not allowed to participate. And in utility dogs regulations, the preamble says, when it comes to training the physical as well as the psychological health of the dog is top priority. It is imperative that the dog be handled in a fair, orderly and human way. This also should include adequate care of the dog through proper nutrition and water as well as maintaining his health which needs to include regular vaccination and veterinary examinations. In addition to this, there is an additional duty to the dog to properly socialize him and to ensure exercise uh, to uh, his needs, to meet his needs. Then at the sighthound regulations, I found the following. Protection of animals. The notion of the animal protection and welfare must always be observed, not only, not only at racing, and lure cursing events. The safety and health of the animal must always guide all official and participant during racing and lure. Sorry. In, a, in accordance uh, with the principle of the protection of animals, dogs must, exempt, must be exempted from unnecessary runs. Consequently, the owner of a dog is always free to withdraw his dog from a racing course, causing event or lure causing event. The organizer will employ a veterinary search, uh, surgeon for the event, what is very, very important uh, because some accidents may happen and if the vet is not there, then it is really not a good uh, uh, situation. If the veterinary surgeon considers the dog's health is endangered, uh, the judges must exclude the dog from continuing the racing or the coursing. Further, female in heat, mated or pregnant, or females that have just been lactated are not allowed to start. This exclusion is valid until the end of the 12th week after the litter day. 
all kinds of doping are forbidden. Taping. Leg tapes are permitted to protect uh, the upper claws from injury, like you can see there on the picture. Take, taping of the inside of the back legs is also allowed. When you remember at the, uh, uh, at the other uh, regulation, taping or stitching was not allowed, but for the uh, racing it is allowed to protect the dogs. Application of the front legs tapes shall be done according to this picture. There you can see exactly how it is done to protect the thumb. You see all these articles in most of FCI regulations that are related to health and welfare of dogs. Whether these regulations are sufficiently respected is another question. And followed is, is up to the organizers of the various events, the judges and also the owners of the dogs. We can write whatever we want to write. Uh, on paper, you can put everything. But we have to react and we have to uh, follow these rules. Because, as I said before, these are minimum rules. Uh, we should not go below the minimum with what we accept at all our different activities. Without, with our hobby, we are always in the spotlight worldwide, and we should always be aware of it. That was my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Barbara. Are there any questions? Could we have the house lights, please? Good afternoon. Thank you very much for the information and for reminding us of all these important points. I just want to ask about the position of FCI against the prohibition of hairless dogs in countries such as Germany and apparently Austria. Since our breeders, specifically for the Cholo Esquinkler breed, we are concerned about this position and I wanted to know if FCI has a position on the subject. Uh, it's a very, very difficult question and uh, has unfortunately, as you know by yourself, nothing to do with our regulations. Uh, in, uh, uh, in Austria and in Germany, uh, the uh, authorities uh, made that uh, rule and this, uh, uh, that it happened. It is not at all from the FCI. Uh, the FCI gives uh, all support to the countries if they ask for it. In the moment, they did not ask. But uh, we are in good contact uh, now with Germany because in Germany, not only the, nak the naked dogs are not allowed, there are many other things which are not allowed. You will see that tomorrow from my other presentation. But uh, FCI is unfortunately, very unfortunately, not in the position to change a law in Austria or wherever, or in Mexico. I mean, it's, uh, we, we don't have the power. It would be nice to have the power, but we don't have it. Thank you. Any other questions? I want to thank the FCI board members for giving Mexico the opportunity of having this important World Congress for Welfare and Health for the dogs worldwide. We are really pleased and thank you so much for giving us this great opportunity. 
And also I want to thank all the speakers from all over the world who participate in this great event. Thank you.